Okay, welcome back to part two of this wonderful landscape that we've been painting. Um, Shandon Bells overlooking Cork City. A very kind of a misty, sort of a mystical morning. All right? Um, in part one, we just painted this background very, very loosely and we created some lovely little misty effects. And everything was just very loose and impressionistic, okay? Um, so, yeah, yeah, go back and look at number one if you haven't seen it already. And you'll see how easy it was to create these little smoky rooftops and that kind of thing. Simple, very, very simple. Now, the tower, Shandon Bells, it's iconic, so I have to do it nice. I'm going to start with the top, I suppose. We'll start from the top and work our way down, yes? Now, the top is just basically a kind of a grey, a light grey. And then we have a lovely pinky brown kind of um, bottom half on the tower. So look, let's just crack on and see how we go with this and see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to start by mixing nice bright grey for this. Now, it has to stand out from the bright grey background, so it's not going to be very light. It's just going to be a nice grey. So Naples yellow, a bit of white, and a little touch of black. So let's try that now. Let's see if that can give us just a nice, simple, soft Grey, nothing fancy, all right? Well, let me just take a look at this. Okay, now, I don't want this looking exactly the same as the background, so I'm gonna just change it slightly. I might take a touch of burnt sienna. So let me just mix in a little touch of sienna, and I wanna see how this looks. Now, that's a bit nicer. It's a bit of a warmer kind of a grey, isn't it? So let's just put in the top pieces with this colour. Now, I'm only doing the dark sides, okay? Because the light sides are going to be slightly brighter. And the trickiest part with all of this is just getting the lines right. That's all. Getting your lines nice and straight. And then just fill it in all the way down. Okay, now. That's pretty much the dark side done. I'm going to now take some white and add some Naples yellow to that. And perhaps a touch of pink. I want this uh, sort of, the sun is kind of hitting this light grey. And it's giving it a wonderful colour. Let me just take a look. I think that's a bit better. So now we have the light side of this nice grey tower poking up over Cox City. And also, if you find you're having difficulty getting nice straight lines, just push down hard on your brush, okay? Like so. Push down nice and hard. And that's it. Okay, there we have a light side and a dark side. Now, you can kind of merge them together very slightly, just by dabbing very, very slightly. And that'll just take the edge off the paint, okay? And it'll give it a much softer transition. Now there also is a kind of a brick effect going on up there. But let's just leave it like that for now, okay? So we have the light side and the dark side. And what you can do also is, and this is what I like to do, to take the, you see, it looks kind of slightly flat, doesn't it? So what I would do then is, I'll take a little of the darker color, just a little of the darker color, just a tiny touch, and I might soften a bit of the darker color into the bottom of this light gray down here and then kind of soften it up into the lighter colour, you see? So it graduates from light to dark then. And that's a very good way of kind of adding a little bit of depth to your different sections of the building. Now you can use this like for doing normal buildings as well, but it's really, it kind of adds the touch of life to the building, you see? Just a little. You 
You know, see what I mean? Because it's an old building, it's very dirty, very dark. So even on the dark side, look, I'll add a little touch of a dark grey just here and there to that side of the building and soften it up. And it just gives that little extra bit of texture to the building. See? Isn't that lovely now? Isn't that much better than just having basic flat colours? So look, we have the top section done now. There's nothing stopping us now from going and doing some nice detail on this. So let's take a small, a small pointy brush and let's take some... No, I forgot one little thing. The top piece of this. So I'm going to put that on. Now in reality, this is kind of a greeny, kind of a coppery colour. But I'm just going to make it to suit the painting. Let's just fill this in very quickly, okay? And another bit of darker colour on the back here. There we go. No. So would you like me to zoom in for you on the tower? Yes? It's going to be just basic detail. Okay? Not a lot. I'll put the painting up on the corner for you there so you can see it. Now I'm going to take, take some black and a bit of brown. Okay? Nice thick colour. Black and brown. And I'm going to start adding some detail to this. So we have a little window effect, okay, up here. So it starts off with a small one. Then we have another one. Okay, like so. And then pick up some more black again. We have another big one down here. There we go. And it's slightly staggered, you see. That gives you the impression of the different layers of the building. Now let's take a little bit of black and let's go up here and separate some of these. And it's good that everything is mixing together slightly. So we've no kind of definite lines, do you understand? And we have these little ornaments on the sides that kind of pop up. Like so. Just an impression, that's all. A little dab of colour here and there. There's no harm at all. And we have a little circle in the centre here, and we have one in the centre here. And I'm just trying to get as close as possible to the paint, to the photograph. That's all I'm doing, okay? Okay, there we go. Nice and simple, nice and subtle. Nice, nice and subtle. So I'm going to just darken some of these windows here. And then I'm going to, now we might as well do this tip up here. There's actually a goldfish on the top of that. So I'm going to just go straight with a line here first. Then there's a little ball, isn't there? Yeah. 
Now I'm going to put a touch of light on that ball. And then with some Naples yellow, I'm going to take this and put that gold fish up there. Suggestion of that little fish, all right? And perhaps a little dark color just for underneath. Now I know I'm putting a lot of detail in this, but I want to make it really nice, do you know what I mean? So I'm going to take some of the lighter color now and put a little bright surround on these windows here. Now again, they're not windows, it's just a feature of the tower. And they have these sort of lats that go across, okay? Just a suggestion, see? Now let's do the next side. Again, I'll go with some burnt umber. And let's just put these in. And don't talk too much when you're doing this because you might make a mistake, especially with little details like this. Now let's get some nice bright color for a surround. And this is just nice and relaxing. Isn't that lovely? You might struggle a bit with this if you have shaky hands. My hands are starting to shake lately. Don't know what it is, but they do kind of wobble every now and again. But you know, that's just life. We'll just get on with it, won't we? Now let's take a little dark colour and define this area. And we also have some of these features on the sides like so now how was that i'd say that's quite nice wouldn't you the top of our building almost done now you can ruffle up a bit if you like so for instance, I'll take some of that lighter kind of a grey colour and I'll add little touches with the brush just to make it more, give it more texture, see? Just to ruffle up a little. Okay, that's all you have to do, nice and simple. Right, moving along to the bottom section. Now let me zoom back slightly. There we go, all right? And the bottom section, I'm going to just make a kind of, it's actually a warm kind of a pinky color, a brownie pink in real life. So I'm going to make that kind of a color, okay? Medium brush, and I'm going to take some burnt umber, and I'm going to take a little crimson, and a little black, okay? I'm just going to use those three colors for now, and I'll add a touch of Naples yellow into that as well. Now, I need to get some Naples yellow on my palette. Will I zoom back for you? Let me zoom back there so you can see my palette. There. Better? Now. Okay, so, Naples yellow. Some crimson. And a touch of the brown. Okay, a touch of the burnt umber. Let's just go with that for now. And that is pretty much the colour of the stone if it were a very dark, dull kind of a day. Okay, it's the sort of pinky brown kind of a colour. Well, let me just try this and see. Yeah, that's almost the colour I want. A bit more pink and probably a touch of cyan. I'm thinking. Let me just try that. 
Now let me go along here and get the edge of this first, the edge of my brush. I won't go all the way down because we're going to have mist coming into it down here. So we have the dark side of the building. And then we have the light side of the building. Now for the light side, let me just give my brush a quick clean here. Take some of the colour off. I'm going to use Naples Yellow, some Crimson and some Burnt Hyena. More Burnt Hyena there now. It's just going to be a lighter version of what we painted. Okay? Now perhaps a touch more pink, I'm thinking. Let me just have a look at this now. It's kind of a dirty -ish. That's not bad. Perhaps a touch more pink. So now we have the light side. And it's come right down here on the outside edge. Nice and straight all the way down. I'll soften them together just where they meet. Okay, now let me just step back for a moment and take a look. Yeah, I'm happy with that colour. So we have a nice colour now in a kind of a bland landscape, don't we? And I could even maybe soften some grey into that here and there, just to tie it in a little bit better. So I'm going to take a look, a little black, and I'm just going to add a little bit of black here and there into that colour, just with my brush on its own. Look, a little tiny bit of black. And all I want to do is kind of just not... I want to head to composition, basically. So I want to introduce some of the grey into this colour. Do you understand? It's just to help tie everything together. I don't want to be going with very contrasting colours too much, I suppose. Um, I want to kind of try and keep it... I want to keep it nice and sort of neutral, you see. Now, I'm going to take a smaller brush, my small stubby brush, my small green one, and I'm just going to go along up there and add a kind of a separation between this you see just like that it's a little bit of a separation just up there and on this side and then what i'm going to do is i'll take a small brush and i'm going to take some lighter gray and I'm going to put this kind of nice stone effect in down along the joint like so and I'll do the same on the outside just dabbing it with my brush that's all and on this side because you have these little stones on the corners of the building you see just to help and even make some of them slightly wider like that okay I'm just trying to add little bits of detail to this that's all I'm doing and we're going across here then There we go, like that. Okay. Again, I'm just picking out details. Now, I'm going to take a slightly darker colour and we have some of these kind of ornaments again on the edges. Like so. And we can add a touch of highlight to one or two of those as well. See? 
like that. Simple, isn't it? Now we do have a little gate. Well, it's not a gate, it's like a little fence area up there. A couple of little fences. And this is where you look out. You go up here and look out through those bars. It's fantastic. Now, um, what I want to do is, like I did before, when I added a little bit of lightness and darkness, I want to just take a little bit of light, maple gel on a bit of white, and I just want to add a little bit of light to this here and there, okay? So look, just pulling it down, here and there, see? Dragging it lightly over the canvas, just to create that little kind of light spot, just here and there, you see? And it just helps, doesn't it? I think it helps just kind of add a bit of depth to the, the structure. Gives it a bit more of a natural kind of a feeling, doesn't it? Perhaps a bit of brown down around here. Just to give it that kind of worn, that worn, dirty kind of a feel. Now, I'm happy enough with that. Um, Next we have our clock. Now this is the most important part of the entire painting as far as I'm concerned. The clock. Shandon Bell clock. Um, no two. There's four clocks on this building. One on each side, okay? And each one is completely different in time. So that's why they call it the four-faced liar. Alright? So you have to paint every single one completely different. The time is completely different. But first I need to add a little bit of light where the grey stone is coming across. Now it starts about, let's go about here, okay? Like that, and then I go a slight angle, like that. Just to give it a kind of a 3D effect. So because we're looking down on this line, it's going to go slightly up like this, okay? Only just slightly. And let's do the same with this one. Bring this one down very slightly and this one up very slightly. Okay? So now it's giving us that kind of turned effect. And next we have to put in our clock. Now I'll take a slightly larger brush for this. Okay? Just a small roundy kind of a brush. I'll take some black. Pure black paint for this now. And let's paint a nice circle now for the clock. And I hope I'm doing Shandon Bell's justice here now. And of course, it is for sale. If you would like the piece of cork history in your home, just leave me, just let me know. Now, I do want to get the size right on this. They're not very small clocks, they're quite big. They take up a lot of the, the wall. So I need to really go nice and big with this. That's not bad. Let's go with the next side. Um, okay, let's go. Try this one here. And this one now, because it's torn sideways, it won't be as round. So it'll be more like a kind of an egg shape. Slightly like an egg shape. Okay? But I don't want them to look kind of funny either. I want them to look right. I'm just going to go bigger with that one. And believe it or not, it's quite difficult to get a perfect circle. On a painting, anyhow. Okay. Right, I'd be happy enough with that. Now, um, up over that, we have this kind of window effect again. Quite big. And we have one on the other side.
Okay, pretty good. I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to take my detailed brush and put in a nice little surround on those. Yes, get a nice little bit of light grey. It's going nice and thick with that. Yeah. And then let's add a little touch of colour for the lats. See? Simple, yeah? Nice and easy. Then put a little touch of dark just under here. And now the most important part, the time. Now the gold, okay, so I'm just going to use plain and simple Naples yellow. Let's start with the center. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Would you like me to zoom in for you on this? Now, let me just bring that down slightly. Just a little, there. So we have little bits of Naples yellow on the tip of the brush. And let's put in the numbers. Okay, they're just little dots. You can suggest them a little bit if you like. But I find just putting little dots is just as well. You see? Just like that. And now the important part, the hands of the clock, okay? We have to be very careful that they're both completely different. So let's call this one five o'clock, okay? And let's call the other one something, say, 11. 11.40, something like that. All right, there, simple, nicely done. Now we have lots of mist down at the bottom here, yes? Let's get some of that down. I'd like to get some of that in. Now I just need some thinners because my thinners is running low. And once we've all that finished, then we can kind of tip away at some little details, yes? Now, give my brush a quick clean there, get some of that color off. You see, look how dirty it is, look. No, just a little bit. Let's go right into some Naples yellow and white. Let's go down here and put some lovely bright mist right across the bottom of the painting. Now, I'm going to cut right across in front of the tower. Boom, look, right in front of it. Round the little circles. Soften that off. Isn't that wonderful? Now pick up some of the pinky color, you see? And you can even go right up then slightly into the tower itself, yeah? Now very gently, I'm hardly touching the, the, the canvas now with my brush. It's just with the tip of the brush, okay? The tip of the, the bristles. Just very gently along the edge. Soften that away. So you can almost still see it going down into the mist, you see what I mean? I haven't lost that edge. Now that's something we have to be very careful of. I'm going to go over some more white and put some more white across under here. Just to help it disappear that little bit much more, okay? And again, soften it up here and there. Isn't this just so easy? It's wonderful. It really, really is wonderful to do. It's such fun. Um, and let's complement that by taking some of the lighter color and coming over here and adding some of that there, you see? It's just for a, a bit of color, that's all. 
And how's that? Now isn't that wonderful? Look at that. Popping up out of the city. Standing tall up over Cork City, Shandon Bells. And do visit, as I said, it's a wonderful place. You would love it, you really, really would. So let me now just get my small pointy brush. I'm going to add some little details. Firstly, it wouldn't be Cork without a couple of crows, would it? Put a flock of birds up here, flying around Cork City. All right. And just to make that kind of more balanced, let's put one out. So there's one just out of the flock. And then we can kind of start adding little details of ourselves, you see? Right, so. Let's go under here, add little touches of detail there. Some little details around the clock. Suggesting little shadows on some of the bricks, you see? Um, I won't go further down here, maybe add a little touch of detail here and there on some of these. There you are, just like that. One or two along here. Okay, and we also have a little Thing like that here. And I'm thinking I might call it a day on this because I really, really enjoy doing this. I must make that fish a little bigger. He's still not big enough. There, that's a bit better, I'd say. And perhaps add a touch more of light on this over here. And I think I'll sign. Yes? Let's come down here and sign the bottom of this. S. Conway. And you have been watching Stephen Conway oil painting or easy oil painting, whichever you prefer. Um, it's been fantastic. Let me zoom in and show you what we have created. This wonderful landscape in such easy steps. Isn't that wonderful? Just wonderful. Now I may, I may have to widen the window just there. I think it's probably a little on the narrow side. Okay, is that better? We can change things as we go as well, not to worry. There we go. Coming down to the clock. And we kept the city nice and simple, you see? It was just little hints of brush strokes here and there. Just dabs of colour. We kept it nice and simple. And again, nice and foggy down at the bottom. And just lots of dry brushwork for the fog, okay? Just lots of dry paint on your brush and soften it right through. So there we are. Shandon Bells, everyone. It has been both an honour and a pleasure to paint Shandon Bells for you today. Let me turn the camera. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've got something from it. Um, anything at all, you can just even use some of the techniques for your own painting. Um, yes, I... 
I'm looking forward to framing this. I must make a frame, frame it and hang it up in the restaurant and I'll take a video for you when I'm doing that, okay? For next week. I'll show you all, all my paintings hanging up. So go on, have a bit of fun with that. Thank you so much for your support again. Um, if you do want to support me, which I greatly appreciate, pop over to Patreon. There's lots of extra tutorials there that you can uh, learn lots of new techniques from. Pop over there and take a look, see what you think. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for watching. And do subscribe if you haven't done so already. You're missing a lot of valuable tips. So I'll see you next week. Thank you very much and God bless.